Good morning, everyone, and hope that you guys are well. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is my first pre-recording since we started with COVID. I said that what I wanted to do was keep every Sunday morning as authentic as possible. That if I made any mistakes, that I was going to stick to those mistakes, even if it meant combing my hair when the video was already done. I know that some of you enjoyed that, but anyway, what I'm going to do is we pre-recording this message and this is going to be played back to you on Sunday morning. It is Thursday afternoon for me at the moment and when this hits you on Sunday morning we will be on our way back to George. Ronell's father passed away this week and we are heading up to the Free State just to go and finish off and celebrate his life and get all his belongings and get everything settled. So thank you for all the prayers and uh, for everyone standing together. Um, we do celebrate life um, and we do know that he accepted what Christ has done for him and that he believed in what Christ has done. And therefore it means that in the life that actually matters, which is the eternal life, we're going to be reconciled. And so we celebrate life in that way. However, it means that I have to pre-record this message and this is something that uh, that is new in a way because I have stuck to live broadcasts in both services and Kingdom School every week so far. And this is in a way weird because it almost feels like I got used to us being together on a Sunday morning. But by faith, I'm going to take myself out of time and see myself in the spot and pretend as if it's Sunday morning and we're going to go into the sermon. I want to encourage everyone just to remind us to remember that we form part of the movement of every nation. And as a reminder, I just want to make sure that we remember that we exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-filled and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Our campuses, mainly in George, is high school um, campuses, and we are praying about taking Sarsfeld. And so we want to make sure that we live in accordance to this, and to those who might be joining us from outside, uh, we as Patria Family Church, who, who forms part of um, every nation, we are currently in 85 nations around the world, and we want to reach every nation on this planet by 2040 with church plants and make sure that the gospel is spread throughout the world. So we just want to do our part in making sure that we establish Christ-centered, spiritual and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. So this is our vision. I want to make sure that we remember our vision is to we see lives communities and society transformed through discipleship in the world, uh, in the word, the presence and the power of God. We want to establish core values in everyone that joins and our core values are lordship, word-based, spirit-empowered, evangelism, discipleship, leadership, family, social responsibility, multi-generational and multi cultural. We must make sure that we understand that when we live in accordance to the kingdom that God wants us to live in accordance to, that those core values are extremely important and we find that in scripture. Also, just anyone that has any need for communication or wants to share testimonies on what God is busy with, please WhatsApp this number. Anyone with any need, if we can help in any way, please Hot, um, use the hotline number and send us a message. If there's any testimony that you want to share on either Kingdom School or the sermons or even just the weekly studies that we do together, please make use of this. We love hearing from you guys and it's really beautiful to see what God is busy with. This week that passed, we did the study on um, understanding our response to love. We looked at God is love the week prior to this. And 
And God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That we wanted to establish. And we're going to say that again today, just to make sure that we understand. When we say God is love, we must understand that He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the only true God, the triune God. And so we're going to go into a brand new series this week. And I want to encourage you to not miss out on this. Um, I've heard a few people come in with quotes after a sermon and stating, man, this is a beautiful scripture. And But the thing is, you can you can hear who forms part of the studies and who not. Um, it's almost as if everyone who, who takes part, who partakes in the studies as a whole, as a, as a move, we are moving forward together because we're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through um, His Word and to edify us together. So please do not neglect the gathering that we have on a daily basis as we study the Word of God. We're putting it out on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube. Please follow that and, um, and go through the Scriptures. If you don't want to listen to either Rudy or myself um, teach, go to the end and see the Scriptures. And then by Friday, we send out the link with a PDF on all the Scriptural references on the specific topic. Build up a bit of a file for yourself. For as you will remember, we started off with Abba, Father. We started off, that is the Spirit of God from within calling out Abba, Father. Galatians 4 verse 6. Then we looked at experiencing the peace of Abba, Father, doing the will of Abba, Father, Jesus accomplishing the will of Abba, Father, the Holy Spirit. Then we looked at Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as, as God. We looked into our response to love. We looked at God is love and then our response to love. And this week that is coming, we're going we're gonna to grow a bit into maturity when it comes to that. So we're going to look at confidence in love. And when we say confidence in love, it's confidence in God who is love. So to live out confidently the love that is within us because it's His Spirit. So we're going to go into that. However, before we get there... We're just going to enjoy a song together that Kara um, has recorded for us. So thank you so much for the worship team and all the work that has been put in. We are celebrating a lot of movement when it comes to um, the worship team. There's a lot of registrations and all of those things are, are um, ready and was done. And Raymond, you and your team, well done. Um, we are so proud of you guys. So Patria Music is up and running and registered. And we are ready for the brand new that God has for us as a congregation. Let's enjoy fellowship with God in this song. And remember that a song in itself is not worship. A heart that is obedient is worship. There will be a day, and this is the day that the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Let's enjoy this together. Your mercy is upon us forever Like waves upon the shore And you have gone before us Through darkness Oh, victory is yours Your mercy is upon us forever like waves upon the shore and you have gone before us through darkness all victory is yours you are good always you You are 
song and uh, it really is what our hearts should long for is calling out to God and saying to him that there is absolutely no one like him today as we're going to continue our study I want to remind you I'm going to do my best to do a sermon on its own that if you only have the sermon that the sermon will be enough it's my hope that the sermon will encourage you to what the sermon is meant for. And the sermon is meant for starting a new study in what we've studied so far. We want to make sure that we have our noses in the Word of God every single day. That we use the Word of God as our guideline, our plumb line, our compass. That we use this as the light. That we become the light and the salt to this earth. That we find Jesus Christ in this word and that we ask the holy spirit to reveal every word that he breathed and so this week what i want to do is we're going to start a brand new study and the study's name is going to be confidence in love believe trust obey believe trust obey confidence in love i love this picture when i saw it what we've done so far is if you didn't see a few weeks ago when we started our study we looked at Abba, and when we had Abba, we had a father with a baby in his hands. It was sort of with the focus on Abba. Then we went into um, the, the, the will of Abba Father, the peace of Abba Father. Then we went into Jesus, the son of Abba Father. And then we came to us and our response to it. And, and firstly, when we started responding, it was a baby's hand and a father's hand. Then we had last week when we looked at our response to love and it was a toddler's hand in a father's hand. And so I'm not sure if you saw the progression of the thumbnails that we used. But when we looked at this week coming, we wanted to say maturing in our response to love. But then I saw this picture and this is an a arm grabbing down into the water and a hand basically grabbing onto it and this is the story of Peter when he sunk and so you can see the boat um, in the background it was the hand of Peter grabbing out the arm to the arm of Jesus who pulled him out of the water with the disciples sitting in the boat there to the right 
And uh, I, when I saw this, I thought to myself, this really explains maturity to me. This is, this is grabbing onto Jesus and understanding our dependence upon him. So this is us growing in love, confidence in love. Believe, trust, and obey. What I'm going to do in this is I'm going to start off with a sermon and we're going to look into the life of Paul. I'm going to use a few scriptures. We're going to go into Philippians. I'm going to have a look at Corinthians. We're going to go into Romans. I want to look at different statements that Paul made. Now, just before we go into this, this is the hand of Peter. I do know that I'm not going to preach on Peter this morning. I want to use this as an illustration, the confidence that he had in Jesus and grabbing out and holding on to the arm of Jesus. I want to speak about Paul and just remind us that Paul persecuted the church. He killed the Christians. He was right there when Stephen, the first martyr in Christianity, was, was stoned to death because he was a follower of Christ. And so Paul was, he was really uh, an awful man in his religion. Um, he was a Jew. He was religious. He was a Pharisee. And he came after the church. And the life of Paul he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. When he saw Christ, he gained such confidence in who Christ is as God. When God filled him through the presence of the Holy Spirit, his life changed radically. And his confidence is one of those things that we as church must remember that he is one of the key people who wrote the New Testament the Holy Spirit through him, obviously, but he was part of that. And when we look at the life of Paul, you and I can find a lot of hope um, in who we are and what we can become. So let's look into the life. And I want to highlight a few scriptures. But before we get there, as a reminder, we're going to say our confidence in love. God is love. Yes, but God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we must remember that. So Philippians 4, verse 13, this is Paul. I can do all things. Now, this is the Amplified, and I love the Amplified because in the brackets, it's an explanation. It says, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Man, what a scripture. I love the Amplified when it comes to this. It, it rewrites a, a simple scripture that we know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is full with the full meaning of this of the scripture the full context of the scripture i can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose i am self-sufficient in christ's sufficiency i am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength confident peace now we want to grow into the confidence of love that's what we're all about the confidence in love to believe to trust and to obey and so here paul is saying that i can do all things through christ who strengthens me however it is christ himself who helps me do this but i am confident in him I want to continue to another scripture, and this is going to be Romans 5, verse 1 to 5. Now, Rudy used this two weeks ago. We used it in um, our response to love as well. But this is a scripture that we need to look at from numerous angles because it is filled with a lot of jewels. So it says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason I wanted the scripture to, to, to be there is that he says that Paul said in Philippians 4 that he has confidence in peace. And here it says justified by faith. We have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace. And the grace is the empowerment in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because, look at the because, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, church, this is what we must come to understand. He has given, He has poured out, He has made. The whole of Scripture that is captured for you and me says that every promise has been made, yes and amen. And it is by faith that we have been justified. It is by faith that we have peace. It is by faith that we can have confidence in who God is. And we can obtain access by faith to the empowerment because it is the Holy Spirit that empowers us. Let's go back to that previous scripture in Philippians 4 verse 13 and just have a look at this again. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who has strengthened, who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. There's a confident peace because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We can have confidence in this peace. I want to continue to another scripture, and this is 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. But by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all of the apostles, though it was not I, but the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing, which was with me. The reason I started off saying what Paul did was that Paul was a man that looked at his own life and, and he constantly asked the Lord, how can I be the one that was called to bring this message? I persecuted your church. I killed Christians. I killed brothers and sisters of mine because they served you as God. And here's a man that in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10 makes this statement. This is, this is Paul looking extremely confident, no longer looking back at all the wrongs that he did. But all of a sudden, looking at his life, he said, But by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am. He is bragging about what God did. He is bragging about the fact that when we look at the scripture in Romans, he says, Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in our hope and glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering. Why? Because it was through his suffering that Christ was made known more to him. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance. He started walking out that walk that Jesus walked. He suffered as Christ. And endurance produces character. And look at the character that he writes with in 1 Corinthians 15. Look at the strong character that he became. No longer the one wondering how could I be the one. But all of a sudden from a different angle. That character produces hope. And what was that hope? Oh, to live for me is Christ, but to die is gain. What shall I do? I long to be with him, but it's to your benefit that I'm still here. So therefore, whatever he chooses, I want to go for. But my hope is in him. For eternity is already locked up in him, but I long to be with him. And hope does not put to shame. And Paul was not put to shame when his last breath was breathed out here because he was with Christ and currently is with him because God's love has been poured into his heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to him. And that same Holy Spirit has been given to us. So when Paul quotes 1 Corinthians 15, 10, he says, But by the remarkable grace of God, I am what I am. 
and his grace towards me has not with, is not without effect. In fact, I worked harder than all the apostles, though it was not I, but the grace, the empowerment of God, his unmerited favor and blessing, which was with me. I want to continue and look at Matthew 24, verse 12 to 14. And this is obviously not Paul writing this, but Matthew. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end of the age will come. To you and me, when I read this as a message that was predicting sort of the end, I read this and it says, because lawlessness is increased, I look around me and guys, listen, lawlessness is increasing. Now, I'm not an end time preacher. Please hear me in this. I'm not preaching end times now. I'm not going to go into doom and gloom because here's the beautiful testimony that we're living for. The kingdom of God will grow and all the nations will hear his name because Jesus paid a price that none of us could and he deserves the full harvest of the death that he died. He deserves the full payment for every single soul that he, that he died for. And therefore the great harvest of souls is still to come. And we as church form part of that. So I don't want to be raptured away um, with the hope that, you know, I just go to heaven. I, I, and therefore, I'm not, I'm not into end time um, theology. I'm not into the eschatology of rapture. We don't focus on that. We focus on making disciples, preaching the gospel, reaching the lost. We, we make sure that we live in such a way that at the end, Satan's head will be crushed under our feet. And then Jesus chooses exactly how that happens. He chooses exactly what he's recoming, he's, he's coming back to earth looks like when, when he comes for his pure bride, when, uh, when the, the new world is created, when, when he, we will be with him. He chooses the fullness of that. What we want to say is the following. When I look into this world, there's one thing I see. I see that lawlessness is increased. The love of most people is growing cold. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. I want to be one of those. I want to make sure that throughout the suffering, no matter what, I will not moan. The suffering produces endurance and endurance creates character. And character has hope. Hope in a future that is not of this world. But for ever and ever and ever and what we're going to receive after this world after this life we cannot even imagine his word says it doesn't even help we try to imagine because it's going to be that much better so this good news of the kingdom the gospel will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations and then the end of the age will come my question to us this morning is this are we busy building testimony because the word says we overcame by the blood of the lamb he has given us all the promises he has been he has he has every single scripture speaks to the past tense it is by faith that we receive grace it is by faith that we have confidence in peace it is by faith do not have a hardened heart do not in any way have a hardened heart. We can grow to have confidence in the love of God. Look at Acts 13 verse 39. This is a scripture that we're going to quote and quote and quote. Everyone who believes in him is freed from all guilt and declared right with God, something that the Jewish law could never do. This scripture we have held dear to us over the last few weeks. And we must make sure that if we still feel guilty and we can't approach God, we must know that something is wrong with our faith. And therefore, we must look at what we view, what we look at, how we speak, 
who we listen to, what videos we, we, we look at. We must make sure that we get our noses in the Word of God. Our eyes, our ears must become sensitive to what the Holy Spirit wants us to hear and read and study so that we don't harden our hearts and become like the earthlings. For we are not of this earth. We are alien to this earth. And we are called to be the salt and the light. I want to come to Psalm 34 verse 5 to 9. And I read this last week in the last sermon. However, again change the angle to have confidence in love. Listen to the same scripture with confidence in love. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. For those who fear him has no lack. I want to remind you of what we believe of us as a congregation and what we've been called to do. We take care of those who has hurt. So when I look at this, one of the quadrants of who we are is hospital and taking care of this world and the cares of this world. Not the cares of this world like we worried about it or stressed about it, but we care for people of this world. Then we establish and equip. When we establish people in local church, we start to equip because we're an equipping center. As an equipping center, what we do is it grows into the equipping towards maturity where we can do training as an army. We can train how do we as church do now, you're not going to be trained into an army if you are still young, if you're still immature, if you still can't go to battle. You're not going to be trusted. You're not going to be taken to battle if you still gossip and strife, if you are still weak in your faith. So training for army is this is the engagement because this what we do is all about family. Family is extremely important to God. That is why the spirit inside of us calls out Abba, Father. And so this is who we are and this is what we want to live for. We want to make sure that we stick to our mantle, our mandate, so that, so that we, the mandate that God has given us under the mantle that he has entrusted to us, that we live that out in true obedience in the character that God has for us. This week, we're going to go into a beautiful study. And this study is going to look at the confidence in love that we should have i have an invitation for you and that is to get out of the boat and join us in the study this week let us look at the life of jesus at the life of peter at the life of paul at the life of the apostles let us look at what they encouraged us with let us study the word let us believe let us trust let us obey because this week is going to be a glorious amazing week as i want to say i love you so much thank you so much for everyone who is partaking in what we are busy with um it is so beautiful to hear the testimonies on what is happening i want to say enjoy this beautiful study enjoy this beautiful week and just to make sure that you understand and know that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made and the grace of the Holy Spirit is ready to help all of us grow into the maturity that he wants for us. To live out the purpose that Jesus has for us. Love you guys. Bye-bye.